Hello and welcome to patching cold Mac number three. My name is Endor and today we will be taking a look at the logic block of this absurdly useful utility module. Before we take a look at the basic uses and some advanced applications, I must give thanks to Whimsical Wraps for the module itself, as well as the detailed technical maps that help fully demystify the entire mannequin series. A link to the full cold Mac document can be found below. Now on to some logic. The OR AND section of cold Mac lives in the center of the layout and is comprised of two inputs and one output for each function. Per the documentation, OR applies analog maximum while AND applies analog minimum. Since cold Mac utilizes built-in normalizations aplenty, the first input of OR is normal to the first input of AND, while the survey control is normal to the second input of both OR and AND. This allows us to easily derive minimums, maximums, and comparison levels for the whole section. Let's take a quick look at what happens when we patch two sine wave LFOs from peaks running at different speeds. The CV itself can be viewed via Make Noise CV bus with the original LFOs for comparison. OR is a Boolean OR operator which will give us the greater of two inputs at its out jack. The logic can be defined simply as When we turn survey from full counterclockwise to clockwise, OR will give us 0 to 5 volts starting a rise from nothing once noon has passed. When we apply 0 volts to either OR input, our output will be a half-wave rectification of whatever is applied to the other input. To briefly display, survey is left at noon and then swept in both directions manually while a sign LFO is first patched to OR1. then OR2, and one into each input. Because we will only get a maximum output, OR functions as a Boolean operator that will output whenever either input is high. If we apply two gates from Pamela's workout, we can see how this derives additive variations from complementary rhythms. Next up we have the AND block. While OR derives the maximum of its inputs, AND will give us the lesser of its inputs. Its logic is... Since AND is effectively the inverse of OR, sweeping survey from full counterclockwise to clockwise moves from negative 5 volts to zero with a null voltage beginning at noon. Similarly, the half-wave rectification will only apply to negative voltages. This is visible when sweeping survey after we apply LFOs to AND1. AND2. And finally, one to each input. Since AND drives minimums, as the name implies, it serves as a Boolean AND operator whose output will be high only when both inputs go high. Let's patch some gates to show how it works. Let's look at some deeper logic functions using OR AND and other blocks. Here we combine a basic AND operator with two gates, one into each input, and a NOT operator via left and right. First we patch the output of AND to fade. Next we turn survey all the way up and patch slope to offset. This combines a basic set of operators to derive a NAND gate, where right's output derives all the action. 
When our gates fail to fire at the same time, we will get a steady 5-volt output, but once both gates align, we drop to nothing instantly. Using the same NOT patch, we simply move our gates to the OR block to drive a NOR operator. In this case, right will give us nothing when either gate fires, spitting out 5 volts when either gate is low. Finally, in our lesson on circuit logic, we have the exclusive OR operator. This will only output a gate when and only when one input is high. Here's how we set that up. Patch our first gate to OR1, cascading to AND1. Molt our second gate to both OR and AND2 with second inputs. Now we send AND's output to fade and OR's to offset, monitoring the output at right. Remember how survey controlled this block in opposite motions? We can exploit this to easily create thresholds for CV splits. Using control voltages with different polarities, thresholds, and motions, a simple application of survey either manually or via another CV allows us to split the incoming signals above or below threshold multiple sources. Here we have maths out 1 and 4 cycling unipolar outputs. Channel 1 is going to OR1, channel 4 is going to AND1, and survey is controlled manually. Because AND gives a minimum, we will derive negative 5 volts when survey is fully down, then get the input signal after we breach the threshold set by OR1. Conversely, OR gives the input signal when survey is fully down, then outputs a solid 5 volts once we pass the limit set by its input. Per the map, we can split a source between two outputs via the normalized connections. Patching the source to OR1, then setting a threshold with survey instantly achieves this. If we want to liberate this block from survey's gaze, we simply apply the threshold we desire to OR2 as well as AND2. Here we will use pressure points to generate thresholds on a continuous rise from 0 to 5 volts. Turning survey will no longer influence our logic, thus allowing ColdMac to perform other functions simultaneously. We already saw what the basic rectifiers within ColdMac do to control voltages. Did you know that we can use those inputs for audio in order to add harmonic content? Patching in a square wave from Mangrove, then sweeping our threshold shows how we can utilize OR as a harmonic exciter and a VCA at the same time. And if we use the sine wave, here from a DPO, If we leave survey at noon, combining AND with OR gives us the original input signal, which means we can independently process complementary aspects before resumming them. Here we have run AND through sister center in and outputs, while OR is running through Mutable Instruments Ripple's low pass filter. Just Friends is controlling the frequency sweeps at different times. In the technical map, there is an explanation of logical crossfading, which we will demonstrate now. First, we have patched Mangrove's form into OR, then patched Melody Mill Square to AND. Rene controls Mangrove's pitch. In order to showcase Cold Max audio summing features, we have patched OR to fade and AND to offset, while getting the output from left. We can crossfade between signals via survey sweeps, with the results being various amounts of OR and AND with negative 5 volt offsets applied.
When we really want to spice things up with audio rate control of survey, the sounds achieved can be rewardingly brutal. This simple patch uses Slope's ability to follow a signal in order to generate a reactive threshold manipulation. First we run follow to OR1, letting it cascade down to AND1. Now we patch in a sound to Slope, in this case from Mangrove sequence via Melody Mill and IntelliGel Dual ADSR, setting a threshold via survey reading OR2 AND2. When our input goes above that limit, follow's output will come out of OR's jack, and when below, it will flow from AND. Using OR instantly lets us have access to gain control for expansion or compression, especially when tweaked with attenuation or offset. Here we are controlling a low-pass gate with Mangrove through Sisters patched in, with a second instance through Ripples. Because we can still process audio via slope increase, getting results out of those or the AC coupled Mac output, we can effectively create a self-operating synth voice controlled solely by cold Mac. With this absolute unit of utility, almost anything can be achieved from the minuscule to the tide moving. And that ends our third lesson on cold Mac. I recommend reading the technical map for a detailed explanation of Bernoulli gates, as well as a more formal looking set of charts and general overviews of each block. In our next look at patching cold Mac, phase related LFOs, self-patching options, extended surveillance techniques, and terraforming. <laughs>